The Legend of Dragoon deserved better. While it struggled to gain traction with a wide audience, it's one of those titles that is adored by those who had the fortune to play it. It's just a shame that most people didn't. And yes, in a lot of ways it is a typical JRPG affair of partying up with other misfits to eventually kill a god or something. However, while it could easily be compared to the Final Fantasies of the world, it shouldn't be, because it stands out in so many unique ways, the most notable of which being the combat. The Legend of Dragoon's battle system is based around addition which are various moves each character has that require precise timing to pull off. As the player unlocks more additions, the moves get more complex and have more benefits. Where many RPGs of the time could be beaten largely by just attacking and tossing in heals every once in a while, The Legend of Dragoon provided more of a challenge with every fight. Players couldn't just autopilot their way through the game as they needed to stay focused to successfully complete additions. The true genius of the system though comes from how additions level up. The more times the player completes one, the more powerful the move gets. This creates a system that challenges players while still being accessible. For example, if someone is only able to pull off Double Slash instead of Dart's more complicated moves, they can still power it up enough to be viable in combat, making it accessible without being mindless. With that said, it still incentivizes more skilled players to go for the harder additions, as there are benefits to being able to pull off complex moves, like doing a little more overall damage, and also getting more SP, which lets characters turn into their Dragoon forms. All of this, all, all of this, I have a Word document where I write out every small idea I have for a video. There are over a hundred ideas in it. None of them are fleshed out, each is really just a seed of an idea. Ideas that I maybe have two, or if I'm lucky, three minutes of material on. The reality of this document is that most of these ideas will never turn into a video. It does happen occasionally. Maybe one ends up being a perfect example for a broader topic, or I find a way to let the seed grow into a grander idea that I want to explore further. But most of them just sit there. A hundred two minute videos that I don't know what to do with. That's not even really true though. For a lot of them, I do have ideas on how it could make them into full videos. The issue is that I'm just so uninterested in anything beyond the original seed that I can't bring myself to make a 12 minute video when I only care about a tiny portion of what I'm talking about. When I make something, I want to be passionate about it the whole way through. I want to be excited to write it. I want to be challenged by what I uncover. And I want that to show in the final product. While I have faith that a few ideas on my long list will grow into something I'm excited to talk in depth about, I can't force myself into making something I'm not interested in making. It wouldn't feel right and I'd question every aspect of it. Hell, even when I like the thing I'm working on, I can't help but think to myself, I hope this video doesn't s Survivor is unironically one of my favorite shows of all time. It tests resilience both physical and mental, it explores what drives humans from all walks of life, and it creates a space where people can mercilessly lie to and trick each other in the hopes of winning a million dollars. While watching the contestants grow as humans and backstab each other to get ahead is incredibly fascinating, I think what has helped keep the show relevant for so long is that it is nearly impossible to watch without thinking, I could do that. And yeah, no, I probably couldn't do that. The contestants are lucky if they get to eat more than a bowl of rice a day, they are isolated from everyone they love and placed into a situation where they can't truly trust anyone, and they are forced to compete in grueling physical activities while depleted in every way. I'd like to think I could do it. I'd like to think I could win. But the reality is that what we see on TV isn't a reflection of the day-to-day -day boredom and isolation the contestants are subjected to. Survivor is an incredibly difficult game to play and an even harder one one to win, especially when considering that the dominating strategy is to eliminate the best players before they can get to the final tribal council. So plenty of times the person who wins isn't the one who played the best game the whole way through. Maybe the best example of this can be seen with four-time player Sari Fields, who season after season proved herself to be one of the greatest strategic minds to ever play the game, but gaining this reputation also made her one of the most targeted players to ever play the game. She. <laughs> Who is going to care about this?
Along with not wanting to force a small idea into something it's not, I also struggle a lot with determining what deserves to be a video. This might sound like a silly thing to consider, but it's hard for me to not feel like there are certain videos that I can't make. There are specific reasons people here follow me. I've proven in the past that I have some engaging takes on game design and narratives, so I feel comfortable when putting stuff out about these topics because people have seen value in what I've had to say before. Whereas I don't know if anyone cares about my takes on who should have won previous seasons of Survivor, because there's no evidence that people would or should care what I have to say about it. And I know there are plenty of people out there who watch my channel more for my general style and thoughtfulness than the topics I talk about, but that isn't everyone. And especially when considering that I only put out one to two videos a month, I want to make sure that whatever I do release not only is creatively fulfilling to me, but also interesting to those watching. I'm hesitant to put out multiple videos in a row that are too different from my bread and butter because that could be months of people not being interested in something I make. Of course, I have no control over what other people do or think, so trying so hard to please everyone, especially on the internet, is a losing battle. But it's one that's hard to avoid because this isn't just a passion project. This is my job and any video I put out affects my livelihood, which makes it really scary to take risks, to do things that might not be received well, to do things that YouTube won't like. I do it anyway though, because I want to create what I want to create. However, it just adds more and more pressure to this whole thing. So whenever I make something that isn't what I normally do, that isn't what people expect from me, that isn't the best choice for my career, before putting it out, I can't help but think, I hope this video doesn't StarKid is the kind of channel that is still a bit hard to believe actually exists. Forming from a handful of creative minds at the University of Michigan, what started as a group of students doing a parody musical of Harry Potter turned into one of the longest running channels on YouTube that continually makes projects that no one else is really doing or at least not doing nearly as well. For over a decade, they've been writing, producing, and posting musicals that have a sort of charm to them that is uniquely StarKid. A mixture of raunchy comedic moments and unyielding sincerity that creates some of the most emotionally resonant productions I've ever seen. Arguably, no show of theirs pulls this off better than Twisted, the untold story of a royal vizier, which parodies both Aladdin and Wicked to tell the story of Jafar from a different perspective. As a massive fan of both Aladdin and Wicked, I still find myself shocked by the fact that I connect more emotionally to Twisted than either of the properties it's based on. And it all comes down to Dylan Saunders' powerful performance of Jafar, whose arc embodies the backwards idea that no good deed goes unpunished. Jafar wants to make life better for the citizens of Agrabah, but his attempts either go unnoticed or are unsuccessful, drawing ire from people he is trying to protect and leading to him becoming more and more desperate to find something that works. And I get that. Growing up, I had an unshakable assuredness that I could make the world a better place. Through good actions and good, good work, work, I could make a change. And I want to still think that. I hope it's the case. But the truth of it is... Beyond trying to decide what I want to talk about in videos, or what I feel like I can talk about in videos, there also is the consideration of what I should talk about in videos, especially ones that are personal. Am I putting too much of myself out there? When I talk about my insecurities and anxieties, are people going to think I'm just searching for pity? Is stating my existential dread going to help anyone? Does my experience even matter? And the answer to all of that is yes and no and who gives a shit. When I was a kid, being a YouTuber wasn't a thing, but when imagining what I would do in the future, this is pretty close to what I dreamed of doing. Making creative videos that people want to engage with. But there is a part of it that I never really thought about that's kind of impossible to prepare for. And that's you. I'm eternally grateful and terrified of you. It's kind of weird. Like, literally millions of people have heard my voice. More folks know me by a name I stole from Psychonauts when I was a teenager than my actual name. And at this point, I'm lucky enough where anything I put out will be seen by a lot of people. 
which means that thousands of folks will hear me talk about anything from why open world games are bad to the ways in which I try to cope with anxiety. And that's a lot to take in. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a lot. I've been doing stuff on YouTube for nearly eight years, and most of that time was spent with a small audience, one that often forgot I existed between uploads. And now that I have a larger audience that I rely on for my job, it's impossible not to consider the ways you may respond to something I do, because my career depends on it. So the questions never stop. How do I keep this going for the long term? Will everyone think I'm a negative person if I keep making critical videos on certain types of games? Will folks lose interest in my channel when gaming for a non-gamer inevitably ends? Will people be mad at me if I run a mid-roll during a serious and personal video? The best show you've never heard of is back and better than ever. Once Upon a Roll, a D&D podcast hosted by Rasputin, where a new guest comes on each episode and plays a one-on-one -on -one session of 5th edition in the Grand Kingdom of Cortia. Listen now on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and wherever else you might listen to podcasts. It, it's good, I promise. There isn't a roadmap on how to do this sort of thing. And there are so many opinions out there that no matter what I do, to someone I will always be right and wrong. It's a weird thing to grapple with. I'm still adjusting to the fact that I am somewhat known now and that you won't all disappear if I take a little time to put something out or make something that isn't what I normally make. For reasons I don't know the full extent of, you are here. And a lot of you seem like you plan to stay for a while, which Thanks, by the way. And I already have a guess for how a lot of people will respond to this video. A bunch will say that my videos are always great and that they'd watch me talk about anything. And a smaller but unfortunately much more memorable group will accuse me of fishing for those kinds of compliments and tell me to stop complaining because I have a job tons of people would love to have. To be clear, while I do appreciate kind comments from folks saying that they're here for whatever, that doesn't counteract all of the things that make me uncertain while creating videos. Because the reality is the vast majority of people people who watch this won't say anything at all. The success of this job isn't about how many nice or even mean comments I get. At the end of the day, my job is run by an algorithm and an audience, both of which have expectations that I don't really understand that I need to try to meet, at least to a degree, in order to keep doing this. I have some guesses for what each wants, but I'll never really know for sure, because neither is telling me. And that's weird in part, and something I just live with now. I'm sure some of you are understandably wondering why I'm making a video about all this. And the answer is, I don't fully know. Part of it is because I can. Part of it is because I wish I saw more people sharing this kind of stuff. Part of it is probably because I watched Inside one too many times and felt the need to do something a little different from what I normally do. And part of it is so you hopefully understand me a little better. I put my whole self into these videos, regardless of if they are deep life introspections or light pieces on game design. And I do get that I'm talking about YouTube videos here. In the grand scheme of things, none of this is that important. But it is kind of important. I care a lot about all of this. And I think that's why I am so nervous about making something that isn't good enough. I'm still learning how to live with an audience. And I don't know that I'll ever be used to it because I don't think anyone is meant to be. But for whatever reason, it helps me to know that after watching this, at least some of you will understand the countless considerations I put into all of this. And also, hopefully it helps me be better about not overanalyzing every aspect of this opportunity I've been given until it becomes joyless. At the end of the day, there are a million million reasons to not make a video, like the idea of being too pretentious, or too overdone, or too niche. Frankly, most reasons to not make a video are bullshit. And not making one because I have people watching is certainly the most bullshit of them all. I want to build more confidence in my work, especially the stuff that is more of a risk. But that'll be a process. So until then, whenever I put something out, I'm just going to have to be okay with taking a breath hitting publish, and hoping this video doesn't suck.